Wow. Welcome, this is Tom from Cool About Woodworking and today we're gonna have a look on how to build a epoxy lamp. This is something that I have never done before, so join me today and we we'll learn together how to do it. The first thing I did is tracing out the form that I'm using for my epoxy pour and then kind of freehanded the moon shape that I wanted to have. After cutting the slab to size, we are unpacking our trusty jigsaw and we are trying to shape this moon. I'm going to go really close to the line. Remember guys, we don't have a template for this, so really go close to the line if you have a band, so even better. And now you can see a little bit of a preview on how the epoxy lamp will look. Now we're gonna clean it up a little bit with our sander and the next step is to inlay the LED lamps. I found the best way to do this is with the chisel. So we're chiseling out a groove about the depth of the LED strip. So you can see I'm measuring every now and then so that I can see how deep I have to go. One thing that happened to me there is I'm trying here to actually inlay the little adapter here in the end. And if you look closely, you can see what happened there. Just be careful with the chisels to don't break the wood. Oh, yeah happened. Well, I'll show you how to fix that if that happens to you as well. I'm just using a little bit of CA glue there. Later on, remember guys, that will be sealed anyway with epoxy. So I put CA glue on, a little bit of activator and wow, all fixed again. It's there. And we were also able to inlay the cable there. Look at this first preview. <laughs> this is how it looks. A little bit shaky already. So if you have been a follower of mine, you have seen this mold beforehand. It's my reusable round epoxy form. If you haven't seen this build, I will leave a video in the description below. Now we are inlaying the cable so it doesn't go in the way once we are mounting it on the base. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing there. It looks a little weird. Why am I putting tack tape on the back of the epoxy lamp? So my idea behind that is I want to try to preserve the shape of it as much as possible and don't want the epoxy to actually bond to the wood here. So this is why I'm putting tack tape on it, which is a mold release and the epoxy doesn't bond there. So guys, fingers crossed and hit the like button for good luck. So this one took me a while to record. Um, this piece is very dear to my heart. It's a memorial piece for our beautiful dog. She was a family member. She was 12 years a part of our lives and she made our lives such a beautiful journey. Um, we had so much fun with her and this piece is for my wife. She loved this dog to bits. She was her best friend. And this is for you and in memory of Maya. Thank you for that. Now back to the build. In every single project, I seem to have always one key moment. And the key moment of this project is here. I'm showing you right now the biggest success and also the biggest failure of this project. So what I'm trying to do here with this shim is I'm trying to create a flat surface to be mounted to the base of the lamp. The idea behind it is to not cut anything too close to the wires to not damage the electronics of the LED lamps in there. I'm actually calling the next arrow here before I'm pouring the epoxy, so listening to that. Cool. I don't want to have a leak there, but yeah, a bit of pressure on it would be good. Done. Well, sometimes you look into the future and you're still making the same mistake. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway, now we are pouring the epoxy and we are using the Health of Mind Art 2 to 1 River Cast. This epoxy resin is one of the best you can get in Australia. It's very easy to use. I have a link in the description below. I'm not sponsored by them at all, but this product is just so amazing and I think you should try it out. Click on the link and I will get a little bit of a kickback for that. So if you want to support me, buy it through there. 
So we are mixing our resins. This is a crucial step, so be very, very thorough with that and make sure that you scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. You don't want to have any unmixed resin here. This will create soft spots in your project. Don't ask me why I know that. Just do it. How much are you going to put in? And I'm like really thinking, okay. oof, but nothing. Yeah, you've just seen my super scientific method on how to mix my pigment into the epoxy. So yeah, so this is how I do it. I just put something in, mix it around and see how it looks. Once it catches my eye, I just leave how it is. Well, here goes nothing. Oh yeah, it's nice. Perfect. In here a little bit there. Wow! Oh my god, that looks insane! <gasps> Damn! <laughs> so, yeah, I'm obviously getting way too passionate about my projects here. And I was so surprised how good it looked. I really like it. You could I probably hear it in my reaction. And I loved it. I actually really loved it. Now, three days later, we are coming back and I can see here a massive error that I made already. Okay, what you guys didn't see is, last time when I was here, we actually had a little leak here. Yes, you idiot, you called it beforehand. And also, when you filmed this A-roll, you cut off your head. What? Anyway, so we had a little leak here, we taped it off which worked, which sealed the leak, which is awesome, but that's not the mistake I'm talking about. You can see the mistake here. I forgot to seal my wood, and this actually created so many bubbles, and I was really, really disheartened by that point because I was like, oh my god, it looked so good. I've got to record, anyway. Well, you can still tell that I'm new to this YouTube thing and forget to record things, cut off my head, and so on. So we're trying to get off our epoxy mold from our epoxy lamp. And what you can see is actually the epoxy is not sticking to the mold. You can see the uh, mold releasing from the epoxy. It's more the cork that is sticking to the wood and to the epoxy. And it always makes a satisfying sound when it releases. Yes, ah, uh, yes, amazing, <laughs> woo, nice, how good is that, it actually worked, I have a flat surface here to mount it to the base, so if you're enjoying yourself so far, subscribe to the channel, I really appreciate your support, it helps out the channel a ton and it lets me know that you like content like this. Now we have finished our flattening process with the router and the router sled and we go to the sanding. First things first, we are sanding out the marks that the flattening process left behind on our epoxy and the wood. We are using 8 degree Diablo sandpaper and our GET75150 the Bosch sander, which is, my opinion, the best epoxy sander on the market. I've linked the products below. After we sent it to about 120 grit, we unpacked our trusted trim router and we generated a little bit of a round over here and we're cleaning it all up with our sander. So I'm filling all the cracks here with my Star Bond medium thick CA glue. What is CA glue, you ask? Well, CA glue is actually just a fancy term that woodworkers use for super glue. So it is actually super good, uh, like super glue should be. And with this activator, it instantly dries and it sands really well and fills up the cracks nicely. The moment has come, everyone is waiting for it. Sanding montage time.
<laughs> so welcome back to the build. Let me know in the comments below how much you hate sending. Anyway, I send it the top here to about 8,000 grit. And what you can see me now is contemplating. Oh my God, there are so many holes because of the bubbles I caused due to not sealing the wood. So now I'm like, ah, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm up in the top and I go back to the base, clean up the base, sending the base and finishing it off just to give me some distance and clarity in what I should do. And I had a light bulb moment. So my idea was to put a flat coat on the epoxy part of the lamp to fill in all the little imperfections and holes the bubbles caused and I exposed with my sanding and the flattening process. And in the end, it actually turned out all right. So I couldn't get rid obviously of the bubbles trapped within the epoxy, but this made a huge difference for the top and the clarity. So we're using the Health of Mindart Glass Clear Epoxy, which is a one-to-one -one mix. We are just using about 60 mils here to uh, cover the area of the epoxy and we are using something called the pizza sauce method. So you just pour it on and then spread it around like the sauce on a pizza base. It was super hot that day, which was not great for me because I was sweating my butt off, but it was great for the build because the epoxy, when it gets warm, it gets more non-whiskers and it self-levels easier. So the result was much, much better. So in that case, I was super, super lucky. Don't forget to record. Again, I forgot to record to go some sending, but well, sending is boring anyway. So I'm sending the bottom here now to 8,000 grit, cleaning up the epoxy drips that came off the flat coat and bringing up the clarity. So we are getting this glass finish and we can actually see through our lamp and you can see slowly how it's progressing and it looks amazing. And I'm actually quite happy with the result. So now we have to be quick with everything. Big dab of super glue, another big bag of super glue, and mm, here, I think. And then we go like this. Oh my god! Hope that freaking works. Well, apologies for the swearing. I'm using a five-minute epoxy to attach the lamp to the base and I really wasn't sure if it works, but in the end, it worked. <laughs> I always love my reactions. <laughs> I don't know, they're just weird. So you can see here the lamp is standing. We can turn it on. It's still working, which is fantastic. Now we're cleaning it off with mineral turpentine, which is the Australian version of mineral spirits. We're doing this in preparation of our finish that we're gonna use, which is Rubio Monocoat. I bloody love this finish. It looks amazing. It's so easy to use. You just put it on and then wipe it off. I don't think anybody ever has applied Rubio Monocoat like I did today there. I just put it on my hands basically and wiped it onto the epoxy lamp and then cleared up the little bit of excess and wiped off as much as I could. The Rubio guy says you can't wipe too much off but you can leave too much on. So be careful to really wipe off every single excess and buff everything in. So my wife absolutely loved this piece. Please let me know in the comments how you like it. Are the bubbles a little bit too distracting? Maybe, let me know. I'm super happy how it turned out for the first try. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more like this. If you're keen to watch another video, click on this one. I appreciate you and I see you next time.